We also learned new details about Trump's premeditated plan to declare victory and got a look at never before seen video of congressional leaders sheltered in a secure location during the insurrection, begging the administration for help. We have got to get the finish the proceedings or else it would have to come Senator Schumer is at a secure location and they're locked down in the Senate. There has to be some way we can maintain the sense that people have that there's uh, some security or some confidence uh, that government can function and that we can elect the President of the United States. Did we go back into session? We did go back into session, but now apparently everybody on the floor is putting on tear gas masks to prepare for a breach. Well, I'm trying to get more information. They're putting on their tear gas masks. I can't. We need an area for the thousand members. They're all walking over now through the tunnels. Secretary of DOD. We have some senators who are still in their hideaways. They need massive personnel now. Can you get the Maryland National Guard to come too? Well, I have something to say, Mr. Secretary. Well, I'm going to call the, the mayor of Washington, D.C. right now and see what uh, other outreach she has to other police departments, as Senator uh, Leader Hoyer has mentioned. Uh, Governor, I don't know if you have been approached about the uh, Virginia National Guard. Mr. Hoyer was connect, uh, speaking to uh, uh, Governor Hogan, uh, but I still think you probably need the okay of the, uh, the federal government in order to come into another jurisdiction. Thank you. Oh my gosh. They're just breaking windows. They're doing all, all kinds. Of, it's really that somebody, they said somebody was shot. It's just, it's just horrendous. And all at the instigation of the President of the United States. Okay, thank you, Governor. I appreciate what you're doing. And if you don't mind, I'd like to stay in touch. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Virginia Guard has been called in. You know, I'm just talking to Governor Northam, and what he said is they sent 200 of uh, state police and a unit of the National Guard. They're breaking windows and going in, uh, uh, obviously ransacking our offices and all the rest of that. That's nothing. The, uh, the concern we have about uh, personal harm, safety. personal safety is just transcends everything, but the fact is on any given day, they're breaking the law in many different ways. And, and quite frankly, much of it at the instigation of the President of the United States. And now, uh, if, if he could, could at least uh, somebody. Yeah, why don't you get the President to tell them to leave the Capitol, Mr. Attorney General, in your law enforcement responsibility. A public statement, they should all leave. <laughs> be just we're waiting for so-and-so we need them there now whoever you got you okay. have you also have troops this is Steny Hoyer troops okay so we have a little bit of time Air, to make that decision. Andrews Air Force Base all right other military bases thank you we Thanks, need Paul. active Bye. duty National Guard how soon in the future can you have the place evacuated and cleaned out I, I don't want to speak for the leadership that's going to be responsible for executing the uh, the, the operation so I'm not going to say that because they are the on the ground and they're the just pretend for a moment it was the Pentagon or the White House or some other entity that was under siege. And let me say, you can logistically get people there as you make the plan. Your 
we're trying to figure out how we can get this job done today. We talked to Mitch about it earlier. He, uh, he's not in the room right now, but he was with us earlier uh, and said, you know, we want to expedite this and hopefully they could confine it to just one complaint, Arizona, and then we could vote and, and it would be, you know, then just move forward with the rest of the state. The overriding wish is to do it at the Capitol. What we are being told very directly is it's going to take days for the Capitol to be okay again. We've gotten a very bad report about the condition of, of the um, house floor with defecation and all that kind of thing as well. I don't think that that's hard to clean up, but I do think it is uh, more from a security standpoint of making sure that everybody is out of the building and how long will that take. I just got off with the vice president. And I got off with the vice president-elect. So okay. saying, yeah. But what we left the conversation with, because he said he had the impression from Mitch that Mitch wants to get everybody back to do it there. Yes. I said that what we're getting a counterpoint that is we could take time uh, to clean up the poo poo that they're making all over the literally and figuratively in the Capitol, and that uh, it may take days to get back. Of, uh, of the U.S. Capitol Police. He just informed me what you will hear through official channels, Paul Irving, your Sergeant at Arms, will inform you that their best information is that they believe that uh, the House and the Senate will be able uh, to reconvene in roughly an hour. Good news. So your Sergeant at Arms will be in touch about, about the process for uh, Right. Thank you very much, Mr. Vice President. Good news. So that was part of the exhibit from the select committee shown yesterday. First, we should tell our viewers, how do we have that footage? How did the select committee get that footage? That's from Alexandra Pelosi, who was Nancy Pelosi's daughter, a documentary filmmaker who happened to be following her mother that day with a film crew. That's really so that's how you got that extraordinary footage. What you also saw was incredible poise, it has to be said, from leadership, from Nancy Pelosi, from Chuck Schumer, from others, uh, while the walls were closing in around them, while people were breaking in. And also, as we said earlier, Republicans standing there at the side of Nancy Pelosi watching what was going on and then stepping out later and more recently and saying, we didn't know how bad it was or we don't know why Nancy Pelosi didn't do more to call in the National Guard. In Steve Scalise's case, he was standing within arm's length of her Listen. while she was doing that. So. You know, just as an American to watch that, um, I think this is why those hearings have broken through so much. It, it makes your, your blood boil that it got to that point, that it got to the point where the leadership of our country, Democrats and Republicans, the vice president of the United States, has their lives under threat because of a lie and because of a man who sent all those people there. Well, and, and you know, we've, we've talked about some of this before. Uh, and I say this as a conservative um, and a former Republican. What we've seen over the past couple of years is not about being a Republican or a Democrat, right. about being a conservative or a liberal. It's about whether you're willing to stand up for American democracy, for Madisonian democracy or not. And let's just call him out. Steve Scalise, he heard Nancy Pelosi telling the Pentagon, get people over here. Get the National Guard over here. If it were the Pentagon or if it were the White House, we know what you would do. You need to do it for us. Scalise heard that and then went out later on press conference and lied about it. And then you've got the guy who wants to be the next speaker of the House screaming at Donald Trump, the top of his lungs, saying they needed help and, and, and yelling at him and swearing at him, saying these are your people. And then going on the House floor saying Donald Trump needed to be held accountable and then going down to Mar-a-Lago, if your kids are eating cereal, cover their ears, uh, kissing Donald Trump's ass. It's just, there's no other way to put it. And you, you wonder how somebody could, their heart could be so hardened and their love for America could be uh, so negotiable to do what Steve Scalise is doing here. Look, Steve Scalise, hearing Nancy Pelosi shouting that they needed the National Guard there. And then Steve Scalise going out and lying to the American people, saying 
Well, the committee won't answer this question. Why didn't Nancy Pelosi do more to get the National Guard there? He's right there. I see John Thune right there. Mm -hmm. When these questions are raised, why don't they speak out about it? I will tell you, I know a lot of people hate Mitch McConnell that watch this show. On that day, Mitch McConnell and Mike Pence stood up for America. And they said, this mob is not going to win the day. We're going to go back on the floor and we are going to vote. And I've heard that, by the way, from the most progressive members of the Democratic caucus that said on that day, Mitch stood with Pence, stood with Nancy, stood with Chuck and were willing to America stood. Thank you. Stood with America. Why is it so hard for the guy who wants to be the next speaker of the House to do that? Steve Scalise, you know so much better. You've been through hell, a living hell because of political violence from the other side. You know better. Why would you do this? Why would you do this? On the most important, I've got to say, the, uh, the most yeah. important uh, time. Uh, and I'm sorry, other it's Republicans, other Republicans who were helping the Secret Service shove a, a, a piece of furniture in front of doors so the mob would not kill them, going out and telling his constituents later that they were just tourists? That, that they weren't an angry mob when he feared for his life? When guns were drawn? I, again, who are these people? Who are these people? Because they are not the people I served with who loved, loved American democracy and would walk onto the House floor every day and we would look at each other and sometimes we'd just stop and say, my God, this is the center of democracy, not only in America, but across the world. How blessed are we by God to be able to stand in this house? And here we are in 2022, and they're selling American democracy out for a failed reality TV host who lost them the White House, who lost them the Senate, who lost them the House, and who lost them their political soul. It is under investigation on a number of levels. It's so well put. This was the moment. This was a moment in history where people had a choice. The choice was easy, and those guys made the wrong choice.